Welcome, everyone. You are joining the National Association of Japanese Canadians information session on the endowment fund. I'll just ask you to please mute right now. We're going to do a presentation first, and then we'll get into questions and answers. So I do want to welcome you. Uh, my name is Lorene Oikawa. I'm president of the National Association of Japanese Canadians and chair of the Endowment Fund Committee. And I'm speaking to you from the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Semiamu, Katsi, Coquitlam, Kwantlen, Kikite, and Tawasan First Nations. And uh, I know that we all raise our hands in gratitude that we are um, settlers upon these different lands and for wherever you're calling in from, I know that you will give gratitude and also respect for First Peoples who are, uh, who've been here for millennia and look after the lands and waters everywhere where we live and work and learn. Thank you so much. Um, first off, we're going to, I'm going to, uh, one of our committee members is, is just uh, coming in from another meeting. So I'm going to hold off doing the uh, full introductions of the committee, um, but we will start off. Um, oh, I should also let you know, we are recording this session. Um, so if you have any issues with that, please uh, turn your camera off and um, you can put questions in the chat. Um, if you don't want your voice or your or your image to be recorded, uh, we are recording it because often a lot of the uh, potential applicants aren't able to attend the session, and we want them to have the benefit of hearing some of the questions in the discussion. Um, so we will. Oh, I see Rachel. Thank you. I'll let her in there. Um, so with this recording, we will have it posted onto the website. And then um, you can also view it again if you want to refresh your memory. But it's also available to anyone who's interested in the endowment fund. And then the other piece of the on the website is also we have a frequently asked question page, which will also list some of the questions and answers and more information about uh, the fund. So. Uh, we actually have all the committee members here, so it is my pleasure to introduce uh, the committee, the Endowment Fund Committee for this year. Uh, we have Yukari Pierlis is, uh, oh yeah, give a little wave. <laughs> April Sora. And Rachel Mercer. Wonderful. And you're going to hear more from the committee, as I said. Uh, we'll do a bit of a presentation, give you more information, and then uh, the final piece of this uh, information session will be to hear from you, your questions, and we'll provide some answers for you. So first off, um, April is going to give a little bit of background to the origins of the endowment fund. April. Thank you so much, Lorene, and thank you everybody for being with us this evening. Um, my name is, as, as Lorene said, my name is April Sora, and I'm speaking today from Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, and I'm very pleased to be a member of the NAJC Human Rights Committee. Um, I'm Sunsei, third generation Japanese Canadian. Both of my parents and their families, along with 22,000 other Japanese Canadians, were incarcerated during World War II. Um, and of course, the reason we're here today is because of them and what they experienced at that time. So um, I just wanna give you a little background on, on the fund. Um, as you know, on September 22nd, 1988, um, Japanese Canadian redress agreement was signed by Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. Um, the agreement acknowledged the unjust actions of the Canadian government and provided a symbolic redress for those actions. Um, of that, from that redress, $12 million was provided to the Japanese Canadian community through the NAJC to undertake educational, social, and cultural activities and programs that contribute to the well being of the community or promote human rights. Uh, the Japanese Canadian Redress Foundation was established by the NHAC for the purpose of allocating that $12 million uh, for community redress payment on behalf of the Japanese Canadian community. The Redress Foundation entrusted the NHAC to administer sports, education, arts development, uh, and cultural development program. So it is the intent of the Redress Foundation and the NAJC to ensure that the benefits realized from the Redress Agreement continue to benefit and enhance the development of the Japanese Canadian community and its members um, into the new millennium. And um, 
there's a there's great examples on our website, of course, of some of the work that has been done in the past. So um, thank you so much for your time again this evening, and I will pass it back to Laureen. Thank you so much, April. Uh, next up, we have Yukari, who's going to talk about the, the cultural development component of the endowment fund. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yukari, and I'm connecting from uh, Victoria, BC. This is a traditional territory of the Kwangan people. And I'm going to explain uh, one of the two uh, endowment funds NIJC is offering. One of them is a cultural development fund. The purpose of the cultural development fund is to provide financial assistance to community and cultural organizations and also individuals for projects and activities. Um, also to promote and develop Japanese Canadian culture and heritage. The maximum grant available for this grant is $5,000. And let's see who is available, uh, who is eligible would be one would be organizations. Any organization can apply, but preference would be given to organizations with a history of Japanese Canadian community involvement. Or, or any organization promoting or developing Japanese Canadian culture. And if you are an individual, you can also apply. I must be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident or Shinyejusha like myself. Uh, you must be a, uh, it must be a project or activity which promotes or develops Japanese Canadian culture. And the application form is found online. I'm sure Laureen will send you a link and you can look at it online. And you have to report on your project uh, once you receive the grant. And the deadline, well, I'm sure we're going to talk about this too, but the deadline for this grant is uh, March 31st. I think that's it. I'm going to give this to Rachel. Yes, and Rachel, a member of our endowment fund committee, is going to talk about the seed component of the endowment fund. Rachel. Thank you. It's an honor to be here and a part of this. Um, my, I put my middle initial there, Rachel Sachiko Mercer. Um, um, I'm a Yonsei, and my, my great-grandparents um, and grandparents were in Port Moody um, before the war, and then in... Um, Slocan and New, New Denver and Angler. And then it came out to Ontario and there's a huge family now in Hamilton where my mom was born and my uncle. Um, so I'm here to talk about the SEED program. I am a very um, honored um, past recipient of, of a SEED uh, grant. Uh, this is the Sports Education and Arts Development um, grant and the purpose of the program is to promote athletic, artistic, and academic development of Japanese Canadians, which will enrich Japanese Canadian culture and community within Canadian society. Um, so these are grants of financial assistance um, to Japanese Canadian individuals for further studies and training. Um, not meant for scholarships and bursaries for um, earlier training, but um, for more advanced training and also in the sports category for further training and development. Um, but more details of the exact eligibility, of course, are on the website. Um, the maximum grants are um, up to $2,500 and the applicant eligibility is similar to the other um, programs. And um, also the deadline is March 31st, um, like the other grants. So that's just an overview and there's more detailed information on the website. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so now you've heard an overview of the fund um, and we have now, uh, we'll get into a session on question and answer. Um, so again, I've put the link in the chat um, that takes you directly to the National Association of Japanese Canadian website and the very specific page about the endowment fund. So that has more of the information that Rachel, April, and Yukari have uh, given you. And it also has a link on that site um, for the online. Well, actually, there's two ways you can do it. You can download uh, an application form and submit that, like by Canada Post, or you can do it online, and then it's an electronic submission. Uh, to the NAJC. And as you've heard, there's the two components for the endowment fund. 
um, they all have the same deadline. So it's March 31st. So 2022 this year, March 31st, and pay particular attention. The deadline is 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. So you have to adjust to whatever time zone you're in. Um, so we do have that deadline. So be mindful of that. So if you are using Canada Post, for example, uh, it needs to be in to us. So you need to mail it earlier. And if it's online, then we just need to have it time stamped that it is um, before the 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so that um, one other one other point that maybe I'll bring up at this time is we do have different grants. So we're specifically talking about the endowment fund. Um, there is also a young leaders grant. There's also um, a community development grant. So just for clarification, um, if you have a project, um, the uh, the eligibility would be for one grant per project. So you can't apply for all the different grants for your one project. So just to be that clear on that. Okay, um, so that's our overview. So if, if you want to either put your question in the chat or uh, do your raise the hand and, and then uh, take yourself off mute and then I'll call you out if you have a question, this is your opportunity now and we will answer for you. Is that Takashi? Do, do you have your hand up? Yeah. Uh, so it's just one question. You mentioned that the maximum amount for cultural development is $5,000 just for one project. Mm -hmm. uh, how much money uh, do you allocate to all cultural development uh, projects? Um, our total, Kevin, what's our total funding available? Mm -hmm. It's usually around between thirty to 35000 in total for all the grants and uh, does it include a uh, seed or just for yes seed? It, it's it includes seeds so that's a total okay. grant available. okay yeah i got it oh uh, can i ask uh, another question you got it go, you go mentioned uh, the eligibility and uh, you said that the uh, people say canadian citizens uh permanent residents they are eligible. You also mentioned Shin Ijusha. Uh, what do you mean by Shin Ijusha? Are they the same as a permanent residence? Yeah, that's what I meant. Like okay, uh, sometimes people use that term sort of interchangeably. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. yeah okay, thank good. you for checking. Okay, and there's a question on the chat. Um, so the question is, do you fund private companies? Um, it depends. Um, when we look at, so it can be an organization, um, but we look at the organization as the connection to the Japanese Canadian community. Has this organization been connected, involved? And then also what is the project? Is the Because we're looking at something that benefits the Japanese Canadian community. Um, some examples of projects have been um, a book, for example, a book that tells the stories of Japanese Canadians. Um, we've had plays, again, about Japanese Canadians. And it doesn't have to be specifically about internment. It's, it's the sort of wide range of Japanese Canadian. It could be stories of the pioneers. It could be something more recent. But there definitely has to be a connection of, of the sense of the connecting to Japanese Canadian community and how does this enrich people's knowledge, appreciation of the arts or the culture, or the history, um, or you know, individual achievements, et cetera. And then seed is a little bit more different because that's specifically for the individuals. And again, uh, it's not a it's not like a scholarship, like I'm going from high school to university, I need my funding. It's it's you're at a higher level, whether arts, sports or academia, and you're going for something at a, a very high level, um, specialized. Um, that's what we want to see to provide. Um, the funding that you are in sort of a, maybe a unique category where you don't have much access or don't have availability of support. So this is our way of supporting someone at that high level. Um, sometimes sports is something where there's an international competition um, that you're looking for some support to attend and represent. 
Um, so I hopefully that answered your question. If not, let me know. Okay. And yeah, Kevin's put uh, the information for the, the budget. So we have a budget and then our process is it goes to the National Executive Board of the NAJC to approve the budget. So we're anticipating that we would have that $35,000 approved in a couple of weeks. So as I mentioned, it is this is something where we do want to support um, for the uh, development understanding of Japanese Canadian history, culture, the community. Um, so we're, you know, we're glad that you're at this meeting and wanting to hear information. If you have uh, other folks, family or colleagues, um, please let them know about, about this fund. We also have um, social media materials if, uh, for those of you that you know, tweet or Instagram or Facebook, um, so you can use that, uh, feel free to promote. Um, we really want to encourage people um, from across Canada, so not just a major centre, but also the smaller towns or the northern towns or the territories. Um, there's such a richness of stories out there and, and too often, um, well, even in the major centers, I live in Surrey and I've been working with the city to try to do more stories because I keep saying, I grew up here, I'm a fourth generation Japanese Canadian and I don't see anything about our community. Um, so it, it happens in large communities too, but also in smaller communities because there's not as many resources. So we often don't get to hear the stories and the history of people. So we'd really encourage people from all different areas. And sometimes those smaller isolated areas don't have the resources. So encourage folks from those areas as well. Um, okay, so one more question. Do topics have to be related specifically to the internment? Can it be on the evolution of Japanese language throughout the generations. So no, it doesn't have to be specifically about the internment. Uh, we often get a lot of projects involved because it's such a, well, horrendous, horrible, racist act against uh, our whole community. Um, but it doesn't have to be about internment. It really is looking at um, the whole wide range of everything that Japanese Canadians have been involved with. And, and as I said, we don't often hear about it. Hopefully that answered your question, Mimi. Takashi? Oh, sorry, you're on mute. It's okay. Just particularly a question. I uh, went to uh, NAJC uh, website and, that, and took a look at the uh, online application form. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting. And so I, uh, I went through from question one, question two, and so on. And uh, say, I don't know how many questions uh, I was going to answer. So some questions I just temporarily answered, just to go to the next page. Mm -hmm. And I went to the last page and I, try, I uh, uploaded some information as well. And uh, I stopped there because uh, so if I uh, push the button, send, send them, uh, then do I have a chance to revise it later after I sent in the materials? Um, no, once you fill out that application and it submits, uh, then uh, that's it. Okay, I made a good decision. Uh, well, uh, so, I think, okay, I, I shouldn't just specify. I think we have set it to allow revisions, but um, it has to be in before the deadline date. So, if worst comes to worst, you can send an email as well uh, if you have any other attachments or any problems with that. But uh, oh, I think yes, the forms yeah, were yeah. set to allow for right. uh, revisions. Um, yeah, uh, what I mean is, uh, uh Say so, uh, I was just about to send in, then uh, I realized I have to check something else. So I didn't send it in, but uh, suppose I uh, did send it in, then I came up with a new material, which I want to attach to my original application. So, then so can I send that in before? Yes, yeah, so sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry no, for clarification. Okay, so, I just uh -huh. meant technically, if you send it, you can't revise it. But if you okay. did send it, but if you did send it in, and then you went, Oh, my gosh, I forgot this, uh -huh, or whatever, yes. then uh -huh. as long as it's before 1159 uh -huh. p.m. March 31st, yes, then as Kevin said, then email us and just say I okay. sent it in, but I accidentally okay. forgot this here. Okay. I have a revise, you can revise okay. it that way. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So I cannot use it online, but I can still send in. Yeah, yes, yes. As Good. long as we get it before 11.59 p.m., March 31st. Good. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Hide Taka. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Um, my name yes. is Hide. Um, I, I just, out of just curiosity, like, what were some of the, uh, like, memorable or standout projects that you personally liked that came up in the past? Like, through, through <laughs> um, I don't know that we can actually, uh, I think that would be a little bit too much to say favorites or whatever. They're all just, let's put it this way. We all, we all, as a committee, uh, liked and therefore approved, right? We recommended the, the projects. Um, so you can, uh, we've got, uh, we're going to update with the, the last year's projects, but you can see all the past projects. So if you look at that, those are the ones that um, were approved. I, I should point out that it doesn't necessarily mean something was bad. It also means that there's a lot of applications we receive. And so if, you know, typically we get more than we have the money. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean something was bad. It just means in that particular year, we ranked it and then these ones came out and they get the grants. Um, yeah, I, I, I suggest that you look at the past ones and you can see there's a wide range, but there isn't any, it's not like, oh, they just like books and they've only approved books, for example. No, there's a wide range of different. And so we take into consideration like I said, the connection that you have to the Japanese Canadian community, what's your topic, um, you know, how, how have you thought out this project? Does it make sense that this is something that could happen? You thought it out, right? It, it, there's a reasonable expectation that this could happen. Um, there's something about it that it'll connect, right? It might connect with a, an audience, a broader audience. So we look at all those things because, again, it's sort of the impact for the Japanese Canadian community um, and also different thing, areas of expertise. Maybe it's how you focused on who you're bringing in to be involved in the project. Maybe it's your own personal connections. Um, so we take into consideration all of that. And, and we have had some excellent projects. So yeah, I would say check out the projects that were approved and they're all listed on the website. Last year's will be, it's not on right at this moment, but will be loaded. And then you'll be able to see last year's as well. And Lorraine, maybe I can just give a bit of an example um, that, um, that I could share. When I uh, first applied, and this was many, many years ago, um, it, mine was uh, turned down. But the the um, the feedback I got was just that it was far too complex, and that I probably didn't have it. I didn't show that I had the capacity to do it. Um, I was probably very disappointed at the time. However, um, I looked at it and realized it actually it was very good feedback. And so I did apply again the next year. I really simplified it. I honed it down and it turned out I, I actually was accepted. So um, I also was has have been a recipient of the funding. Um, and I, I found that really the feedback was great. So I just wanted, I thought I'd just share that. That's a good example. Thank you, April. So yeah, we, 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 um... We're always mindful of because we want you to be a success as well, right? We want it because it's going to benefit the community. So we will give you feedback. And that's a good point too. Uh, you can, if you apply one year and you don't get it, you can apply the following year. So you're not restricted from applying. And then Yukari, thank you. Yukari's put the link in the uh, chat that links to the past recipients. I could probably recount a few examples uh with my history at the NAJC. Um, like I do recall like Denise uh, Fujiwara, who's a very uh, well-known performer came up to me and actually said, uh, when I said I was from the NAJC, she actually it mentioned that she received the grant over 25 years ago, I believe, that initially helped to get started. And uh, we were bringing her in as a performer now, a renowned performer. And it was amazing that she would, uh, recant that because uh, you know that was something that was happened a long time ago uh, we funded olympians over the past uh, with you know, high performance athletes um, we've had people that have had um, um, like emerging artists or initial artists i think just recently and she invited uh, the NAJC to attend her opening performance at the cultural center in toronto so um, and there's authors and filmmakers uh, i think someone did a 3d film uh, of uh, New Denver in the internment camp memorial center there 
And uh, I remember funding that a few years ago. And then when I saw the end product, it was just amazing. Um, so, you know, clearly, you know, it's, uh, it's a wide range of projects that we've seen. And when you look at the list, I think over the years, it's been well over a million dollars that have been funded through this program. So there's been, a, uh, you know, we don't fund a lot of money coming out of this, but I think, I think every little bit helps on some of these cases. And um, I think we're quite proud of what we've seen emerge over the years. And uh, um, we're definitely encouraging people to just, uh, if you have any doubts about anything, we definitely would um, uh, encourage you to ask the questions and send questions into the national office. We can definitely point you into the right direction. Um, if you look at the history of what's been funded in the past, I'll give you some idea, uh, but we do start off with a clean slate every year. So we do rank projects um, uh, in a given year against like, all the other projects that are in place. So something that was funded necessarily a few years ago may not necessarily get funding depending on the amount of funds available and the number of applications we receive. But uh, uh, I definitely would encourage you to apply. We've tried to streamline the process to make it a little bit easier with the online links. And um, the setting, I did check the setting of the form. It's a Google form if you're doing it online. It does say that you can edit a response. Um, I've never seen that tried or what that looks like, but. Again, if you have a problem, uh, once you submit a response, I can definitely retrieve the response for you and then send it back to you if you wanted to have a look at it and submit a revision. So uh, yeah, definitely let me know if you have that. And my email is ed, uh, ed, I guess, but ed at najc.ca, uh, ed is for executive director. <laughs> Thank you. And my apologies, I forgot to introduce Kevin Okabe is the executive director for the National Association of Japanese Canadians. I'm sorry, Kevin. He's uh, just a regular and a great support for us. And I also put our general uh, email national at najc.ca if, if something comes, comes up later on in terms of a question. But also I'd encourage you to look at the frequently asked questions that's on the uh, website and you just click into it and it has drop down for all the different questions. And then we're always revising our materials as well. So if anything comes up, then we might also, even from this session, we might say, oh, we should add that. So we'll, we might add that to the website as well. And as I mentioned, this recording, um, we will put this on the website too for future reference. So other people who couldn't attend the session, for example, can watch it. Any other questions? Uh, Cam. Hi. Hi. Th thank you for taking my, uh, my my call here, if you want to call it that. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm not of Nikki heritage. I'm of, I'm of Chinese heritage, but this is a book question. Um, the, uh, this, the application form asks for how much a book project, or a, any sort of project would cost. Now, should I go to a prospective publisher and ask them how much would be involved in the prospective book? Um, yeah, it's, it's the, yeah, your project, um, you need to provide us with an overview of, um, I intend to publish a book, right? And then this is the budget. And then, you know, let us know, do you have other funding? Like if it's going to be, because you heard our limits, so 5,000. Yeah. So if it's going to be more than that, then how will you achieve this project? So if I can get 5,000 from the NAJC, if I can get this much money, like if you've worked out something so that we can see that this makes sense, it actually could be achieved. Um, I can definitely tell you right off the bat that editing, professional editing fees will cost me 3000 but I, I suppose I'll have to ask a prospective publisher as to how much they would put in or how much I would put in. Yeah, you'd have I, to, I, sorry? Go ahead. Yeah, so you'd have, you'd have to figure out what, in terms of what's your revenue, like where is the money coming in from that you're going to have? Like, is it, you know, you have donations, you're doing a fundraiser, or you've got another grant, etc. And then your expenses, the outgoing. So what, so to, in order to achieve this at the end, a published book, what are all my expenses? So yeah, you'll have to determine um, if they're like editing costs or whatever, right? Printing costs, all that. So outline all of that. Thank you. Yeah. And then that gives you the, so therefore, when we look at it, he'll be like, 
here's your expenses, but here's your revenue. And so, oh, it matches. Yay. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about uh, a potential, I know you don't want to give away too much of what you're working on, but did you have any questions about potential ideas, projects? Yeah, as we've said, you can look at the past projects. Kevin's mentioned a few. It's really open. It's open to your imagination and creativity. And that's, I think, one of the things the Endowment Fund Committee really, um, we get such pleasure from just seeing all the creative ways that people can tell stories or convey the emotion of something. And it doesn't have to be just internment. It could be uh, pioneer families when they came to Canada, their stories. Um, yeah, I, I have one question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just this. Yeah, okay, I have one question regarding, uh, say, uh, cost. And uh, say, say uh, just for example, uh, say my project will be three thousand dollars, and and but uh, I'm asking uh, only uh, two thousand dollars from NGC, NGC, because uh, I have applied for another fund for for one thousand dollars, mm -hmm. but uh, at the time of application. I'm not quite sure if I can get another, you know, uh, there's a one thousand dollars from other source. So you see, then, then can I just can I still say two thousand dollars from NHAC and one thousand dollars from another fund which I have upright already, but I don't know if I can get it or not. Yeah, no, that's fine to project. That's so then, fine. what you'll okay, do is, good. yeah, then you just put right. there applied sure. for this funding, hoping to receive this much. Okay. You just have to make it sense to us so that we go, well, how is he going to do this? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. He's got this funding from here. He's got this donation here. Then he's mm -hmm. requesting this from us. And that adds up to this, which covers off all his expenses. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Right. Okay. Good. We just don't want it to be that you say, you know, my project's going to cost this much. And I asked this much from you and then, but you don't explain. And then, right. And then we go, wait a minute, if it costs this much and you're asking this much, mm -hmm. how are you going to get what's covering the other big gap mm -hmm. there? Yeah, I think the application form also asks for contingency oh. plan. So if you have, um, if you don't receive all the funds that you're anticipating, then what would you change to the project? Could the project still go ahead or would you, would you have to stop the project because um, that would be obviously relevant for our consideration? Yes, good point, Kevin. Yes, it does say that too. So that way you can explain that, right? You've applied for a grant of another thousand dollars. And but if you don't, you also have a backup plan like your your <laughs> your aunt is going to provide the funding in case you don't get it or whatever. So again, just so that we know, like, okay, does this make sense? Okay, he's got a backup plan. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and sorry, oh, uh, so one of the chat questions. So yes, if you have um, uh, another question or there's something more that you don't wanna bring up in, in front of the group, then you can email the question. Um, so national at najc.ca and then just put in the subject line it's a question about the endowment fund and then that way it makes it, it, the uh, way to us and then we can review it and then provide you with a response um, but yeah do it do it earlier not later <laughs> because it's going to be if you email us at 11 p.m and go i was just wondering <laughs> on march 1st i don't know that we can promise we're going to be able to respond that quickly for you to get it in time for 11 59 p.m for the deadline so yeah plan accordingly <laughs> Anything else that anyone's thinking of? Um, committee members, is there anything else that we wanted to bring up?
Uh, one of the things maybe I'll just bring up is uh, for those of you that have been around for a while, um, one of the things that did change, so years ago, um, we did have a requirement that you had to provide a letter um, a letter of support from a member organization. We don't have that requirement anymore, but what we do want you to do is connect with that local member organization. Um, and the reason why we want you to connect is because there is a whole network that you might not have access to if you're not involved with a local member organization. And also they can be a great support to you too in terms of whatever your your product, right, or your book or your play or your music or whatever it is, uh, they're a great resource so that when it comes time to help promote, um, and they might have other things that they do in terms of their events and so forth, and it might be an opportunity for you to get a more, another audience. Um, so we want to, and we, and again, like we said, we really want to support um, the Japanese Canadian projects and the talent. Um, so we don't ask for a letter of support. We just ask that you make contact with the member organization um, so that you can build that relationship. And then also it benefits both the organ member organization about learning about another Japanese Canadian project. And it also benefits you for that network and also the promotion. Um, we will also promote as the NAJC. Um, so one of the requirements is to, you need to please let us know, of, obviously, of course, about the when your project's finished. And if it's anything you're promoting, uh, we ask that you acknowledge the NAJC for, for our financial support if you're a grant recipient and uh, include our logo. And uh, that also helps future recipients because then if they find out about our grant program, then there's more access that way and also about our organization, about what we do. And then um, we will also um, help promote through our social media. We have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and then we have our website. And then we also do e-newsletters out to the membership. And we also do a general e-news that is subscribed by a range of people. Um, so then we would help promote uh, your work as well. Um, thank you, Yukari. And if you're wondering, member organization, what's that? Where are they? Um, we have the list right on our website. Yukari's put the link right there. So it lists all the member organizations. If you are in a um, smaller town that maybe isn't in a city where there is a member organization, just contact the nearest member organization and just let them know. But yeah, we have representation pretty much across Canada except for the Eastern. Atlantic side, we don't um, have the representation, but we have other member organizations that can also help promote you. And yeah, and, and a lot of our member organizations do some very awesome work of events and different things. And as fingers crossed, things get safer and better and more things are opening up and maybe we see the return of different festivals and things like that. It's really great to have that connection with member organizations. Um, I love it all the time. I try to attend as many as possible because I just learn so much about the community, what's happening. And plus, if it's in person, I love the food. <laughs> uh, some great opportunities. And then plus two, if you are, if you do have something to promote or you're a performer, for example, what better way to find out that a member organization has something going on and maybe they are, you're a musician, they're looking for musicians. Um, so an opportunity to showcase your talent as well or do a reading or whatever, right? Okay, I can't think of anything else unless anyone has any other questions. Um, I don't want to prolong it. I'll, I can give you the gift of time um, so that we can wrap up. Um, as I said, we'll have the recording on the website so you can see that. Uh, frequently asked questions is on the website and all the information about the programs and the application forms on the website. And if something occurs to you, then like I said, reach out, uh, email us national at najc.ca. Just allow yourself plenty of time because the deadline is March 31st, 11.59 p.m. So right minute before midnight, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on March 31st. 
and then corresponding your corresponding time zone from wherever you're calling in from. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to get the information to make sure that you're prepared uh, to apply or to share this information with someone who is applying. Um, we, as I said, this is very important to us. This is a commitment uh, by the NAJC um, to support the Japanese Canadian community and um, we are open. We want to see your creative ideas. There's, there's, there's no idea too small, too large. We want to hear it all and, and, and also celebrate all of the talents of the Japanese Canadian community. So thank you everyone. Thank you to Kevin and the Endowment Fund Committee, Rachel, Yukari, April, and thank you all of you. Keep safe, have a good evening. Oh, and happy Girls Day. <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot. Hina Matsuri, I was telling my, my, my day job, my work folks, so they were quite surprised. So that's another good example, right? So some of the, the staff said to me, I've never heard of that before. So I think, actually, I think it was Winnipeg. Anyway, there was, you know, the doll display with the emperor and the empress and all the dolls. And so I had a picture with the red cloth, just beautiful. So I shared that with my staff. And there were some, because some who have worked with a lot, they've heard me talk about different Japanese celebrations, but there were a few new ones that we have at our, in our team. And uh, yeah, one of them said, thank you for sharing. I've never heard of this before. It's so beautiful. So I told them that, you know, when I was younger, my grandmother would make all sorts of special treats, the desserts and, oh. and so forth. It'd be, oh, there we go, Takashi, you've got the dolls. So I don't have the whole fancy displays. I've got a little Emperor Empress doll that I put up as part of the display, but um, yeah. So anyway, so there's a simple thing that you think, wow, right? Because some of us are more familiar and we'll say, oh, well, yeah, I knew about that. My family did that too, treats for Girls' Day. But there's a whole bunch of people out there that don't even know a little thing like that, that special thing that we do to celebrate the culture. So thank you for all the work that you're doing, all your talents and creativity. And we hope to see your application. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody.